Hi, I'm Andrew Petro, and this is JSIG CAS in 10 minutes. This is the CAS portion of a talk I'll be giving in Unicon's booth at EDUCAUSE uh, tomorrow and on Thursday. What is CAS? JSIG's CAS, the Central Authentication Service, is open source single sign-on for the web. It's open source software that implements single sign-on primarily for web applications. To get at what single sign-on is, I like to talk about multi-sign-on. Multi-sign-on is when you have different applications that each present their own login forms. And perhaps they all use their very own credentials, different usernames and passwords for all these different applications. You can improve this a bit, perhaps, by having you know, one store for credentials, one authoritative username and password for each of the users on your campus. And in that case, you know, all the applications, each presenting their own login form, uh, gets to touch the end user's passwords. Uh, and if you've used LDAP or some other store as your central store of passwords, so at least I'm using the same username and password for each application, well you get some user convenience in only having one username and password for all of these, but of course all these applications are touching the user's password, which means that any compromise among any of these applications is going to leak primary credentials. And so if the adversary comes along and compromises one of these applications, then not only does he compromise whatever that application is, get at you know, perhaps whatever data is in it, but that password that the adversary is running off with is now useful for authenticating to all of the other applications that are sharing this same store of credentials. And so this is a bad thing, that the weakest link in your environment, whichever application is most convenient to compromise, yields passwords that are useful in accessing other applications. Wouldn't it be dreamy if there were only one login form in your organization, only one application trusted to touch these primary credentials? And CAS seeks to be that application. It's looking to be the web application that end users interact with to present usernames and passwords or whatever their credentials are going to be. And it's a trusted intermediary that brokers authentication to these other applications. And so the idea is to get rid of all your individual application login forms. I no longer present a username and password. I no longer present uh, my credentials to particular applications on the campus. And instead, all of these make use of CAS and the CAS login experience for authentication. And so you might still have an adversary, and you know, heaven forbid that adversary might compromise one of your applications for whatever reason, gets a rootkit in there, whatever it's going to be. And that's bad, clearly. Um, Depending on the application, it might be less bad or more bad. Maybe there's some very important student data in there that was protected that no more is protected because the adversary's gotten his hands on it. But what's been achieved with CAS and with single sign-on is that this compromise is no worse than it has to be, that the adversary doesn't get his hand on the end user's credentials because the end user is not presenting any credentials to these individual applications. Rather, all of them are linking to or redirecting to CAS and a CAS uh, user experience for authentication. So here I am at CSU Chico, you know, they're using CAS, and when I want to authenticate to a web application that uses CAS, instead of presenting my username and password to that web application, I'm able to present it to a CAS login experience. And so web applications no longer touch the end user's password. In the pictures I've been showing here, uh, LDAP has been the example store of credentials. Uh, CAS is not itself looking to be the store of credentials. It's not looking to be the system of record. It's looking to broker wherever it is you do store credentials into a web single sign-on platform. 
So you continue to store credentials wherever it is that makes sense to store them, whether it's in LDAP or Active Directory or in a database or uh, in a system that you authenticate to via Radius or, or whatever it's going to be. CAS is not looking to replace that. CAS is looking to bridge that to the web to provide this web single sign-on experience. And so you might ask, well, what about portals? In a portal, I need to, the portal needs to go to other interesting systems on my behalf and go get information. It needs to authenticate to, you know, IMAP to go get email or a calendar system to get calendar information or a learning management platform or a student information system. In order for the portal to be interesting, it needs to authenticate to other systems on my behalf. And perhaps in the traditional bad old days, what happens is that I present a password to the portal and the portal goes ahead and feeds that password out to you know, the modules that need it, which go ahead and replay it in screen scraping or authenticating to an IMAP server on my behalf or authenticating to some other system on my behalf. And so it's a uh, lot of credential replay. And the problem with this, of course, is we're back to proliferating passwords all over the place where a compromise anywhere is a, is a very bad thing. It, well, with CAS, there's no password to replay. So how can my portal authenticate you know, on my behalf to other applications? And so CAS has a feature for this called proxy CAS. Uh, and so some web applications proxy authentication via CAS using CAS as that trusted intermediary to backing services on behalf of the user. These proxied applications and services may themselves proxy authentication. So you can have a whole stack of turtles if perhaps your portal needs to proxy uh, authentication to a webmail application, which in turn proxies authentication to the IMAP server. You know, that chain is entirely viable. And so CAS authenticates both the end user and the service or services in the proxy chain. And it does this without replaying the end user's password. which is really cool. CAS is more than just open source single sign-on for the web, or at least it's rich and featureful open source single sign-on for the web. And in particular, it has some features around ability to uh, you know, represent the authentication as a SAML assertion, return user attributes, uh, you know, bridging to that OpenID API, implementing single sign-out, uh, and some other features. So CAS is looking to be a rather rich platform for this specific problem of open source single sign-on on the web. Of course, I think that the best feature of CAS is uh, Unicon's services for CAS. Uh, no joke. Uh, CAS is a fantastic consulting platform for building the web authentication experience that you need. So whether it's further integration with something like the one-time password tokens offered by Vasco or whether it is you know, integrations to achieve uh, multi-factor authentication or multiple you know, levels of authentication in your environment, whether you have a more complex story on multiple stores of credentials and multiple ways of authenticating users. You know, whatever your larger user web authentication experience requirements may be. CAS is a Java implemented, open, extensible, well-architected platform for achieving those experiences. And Unicon offers services to help you to be successful in achieving those experiences with this open source platform. If you have any questions about CAS, about Unicon services for CAS, I would be absolutely thrilled for you to contact me. Uh, there's a contact form on unicon.net. There's an email address, uh, my email address, apetro at unicon.net. I'd be more than happy to see an email from you and talk further about this presentation. I hope a 10-minute introduction to CAS has been helpful for you.